thank you for coming back to the Silly Kitchen, the food photography series where I have been talking your brain off about how to shoot in manual on your DSLR. So we talked about four different components of manual mode. If you're just watching this for the first time and you're like, what the heck is she talking about? Go back and watch Aperture, the shutter speed and ISO and white balance videos so that we can bring today's video all together in a photo shoot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you exactly my process to take this shot. So let's go, let's take a look. I'm gonna take you through my setup, my backdrops, my lighting, and then what I did exactly to my camera, what settings I decided to use to get that final shot that I really wanted and had perfect control over exactly what, what that result was, which is really why I'm trying to help you, educate you, give you some tips and tricks on photography to help you understand how you can get those exact results. So the first thing I do when I'm shooting food is I kind of get an image in my head of what I want the shot to look like. Because this is a sandwich, I'm bringing out some of those beiges and wood tones to match the bread color. And that way all the colors inside the sandwich are going to pop. So I've got the one backdrop laying down and then the other one standing up so that I have the foreground and the background uh, matching with similar tones and colors. And then I'm going to pick some accessories because I don't want to see that line that's created in the background. I want to put some material there which is going to be blurry because I want a shallow depth of field, a low f-stop number, but I still just don't want to have those lines in the way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of material kind of across the way, uh, a little bit in front so we have some texture. I've got my 24 to 70 lens on my Canon camera ready to go, but we need a sandwich. So now that I'm all set up in the mini studio, I'm gonna build my sandwich and I'm building it on another board that matches that same scenario with the wood colors and kind of that soft beige um, look. I'm building the sandwich towards you so you can see, I'm looking to make sure that I can see all the layers from the side that I'm gonna shoot it on. So I see bread, cheese, onion, tomato, and lots and lots of layers of ham. I'm also gonna take my chances and drizzle my uh, mustard onto this sandwich here in my kitchen and then I'm gonna bring up the sandwich to the studio. So if I was not so confident in my mustard pouring skills, I would have maybe done that right on my set, but I'm bringing that whole board up and I'm just going to hopefully leave those drizzles the way they are because I love the way that they ended up. So. Natural light is the way that I like to shoot. Most of my food photography is natural light photography. So I've got it right beside the window. It looks really, really, really bright in this video, uh, but it is actually a very sunny day with clouds and there is buildings kind of near me. So there aren't a lot of, there isn't a lot of direct light coming onto that sandwich. It's all very soft and diffused light, which is what I prefer. Now, I looked kind of at the scene and I thought, oh, I don't want just all of that beige in the background. I'd really like to have some color in the background. It's gonna be super blurry because I know I want that shallow depth of field, but I still want some color to pop out in the back. So I'm just using the same ingredients that I used in the sandwich and I'm putting them in a bowl that matches the setting and I'm gonna put it in behind the sandwich to just give us a little extra texture and a little extra color in that background, not just those browns and beiges. And I'm being very particular about it, <laughs> even though it's not gonna be the focal point. But there we go, this is my setup. This is how we're gonna start shooting. I'm gonna just adjust that sandwich top to make sure I can see all the layers. You can see all that shadow on the right hand side. So this is where my reflector comes in. I use this every single time I'm shooting like this because we need that light to bounce back onto the sandwich. And you can see as I move and maneuver how the light changes and casts that extra bounce over. So now I'm ready to shoot. I know in my head I wanna start at 4.5, a shallow depth of field, and I'm just gonna take the first shot. Whoa! It is so orange, it is overexposed. There is just a lot of things I don't like about the exposure of this. And you can see straight out of the camera, those are the settings that I used. 
So knowing that, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna adjust. I wanna keep that 4.5, but that ISO needs to come down. I cranked it a little too high. I thought it was darker than it was. So I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna change my white balance onto the shade setting. Now this is more the color and the tone that I am looking for, but I still don't like that shadow on the right. So I do need to adjust my reflector so that we can bounce even more light closer to the front as opposed to just the side view. And then we're gonna shoot again and make sure that that's all set and ready. Pretty quick and easy getting this result. I love the way that this turned out. There's still a couple little things that, you know, I might adjust and change. So I'm just gonna play and then I'm gonna take a breather and a break and just make sure that I look into the back of the camera, have a look to see through all of the pictures that I've taken, probably a dozen or so, just to make sure I look what I'm seeing and that there is one final shot that I'm probably gonna use, which is this one. I do see a little blemish on the tomato I'm gonna get rid of in Photoshop. And then also I do wanna take some of those highlights on the left-hand side out. So I did kind of do a couple little things in Photoshop afterwards just to perfect it, but the shot itself was definitely the result that I wanted. Okay, so there we go, we did it. We went from setting up the shot, getting the sandwich made, very important, and then choosing your aperture, getting that depth of field the way you want it, getting that shutter speed to allow enough light in without any movement happening, and then adjusting that ISO to get that extra little bit of light that I needed to kind of fill all the areas I wanted. And then making sure, of course, the color with the white balance was set just to the right kind of little bit warm, kind of that moderate. I guess the end shot is kind of in between warm and cool, that happy kind of middle place that I really like. My thought is I would like to do another couple of these for my YouTube series here, kind of get into even more specifics about why I choose the backdrop that I choose, why maybe I uh, put things in the background the way I do and how I choose doing that, uh, maybe doing some light and airy photography versus some dark and kind of moody photos. Um, so let me know what you think. Let me know if that the series was helpful, if this episode was helpful, if I'm missing something that you might want to know about. Um, but other than that, stick around, um, hang out with the Silly Kitchen. I do lots of recipes and fun stuff, as well as these kind of food photography tips and tricks and things that I want to share with you to make your food photos pop and really look great out there. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.